Hello and welcome back or welcome to the League of Ungentlemanly Warfare. My name is Saduk and this is Crusader Kings 3 Paradox's newest installment of the Crusader Kings franchise. Um, this is the second episode and we are playing as a Duke in the Byzantine Empire. We are Duke Constantinos of Paphlagonia, um, the head of House Dukas. Our credo is God stand by me. And um, in the last episode, we managed to make a um, proposal for a marriage of ourselves and of our son Andronikos to um, Duke Simvatios of Obsikion, um, Eulalia uh, is to marry Constantinos, our ruler, and Anastasia, the daughter of Duke Alexios of Cappadocia, is to marry our son, Andronikos, here. Um, not much happened in the last episode other than that. So let's see what else we got. Um, I haven't taken a look. Uh, I have not take, took a look to the to the, the resources. So they seem to be fairly similar to what we had in Crusader Kings two. So we have gold, prestige, piety, and we have renown. I think this is new. So you are. You gain renown by doing certain things. Renown. Renown is much like prestige, but shared by an entire dynasty. A dynasty gains dynasty, 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 dynasty. A dynasty gains renown for the following. The number of currently living members, the number of rulers, the number of spouses to other rulers. Note that a ruler will not generate renown should they have any liege of the same dynasty. As with prestige, renown also counts towards increasing, increasing your level of splendor. Renown can be spent by the dynasty head in order to unlock dynasty legacies and influence the members of the dynasty in various ways. That's interesting. So... Level of splendor is a measure of how famous a dynasty is. Level progress is made whenever your dynasty gains renown. Characters get an amount of initial prestige when they are born, depending on the level of splendor. Similarly, spouses gain some prestige from each other's dynasty when they marry. The levels are base, origin, obscure, insignificant, noteworthy, reputable, well-known, significant, famous, glorious, fabled, and legendary. We are on the second level. We are obscure. And this is the effect that our children are born with a hundred prestige, right? Come on, how can I lock the tooltip? By clicking, by holding Alt? No. Control? No. Whatever. I think it's prestige. Uh, our children are born with a hundred prestige. Marrying into this dynasty gives zero prestige and the rulers get a maximum of Plus 10 long reign opinion. Okay. Um, Dynasty tree. That looks dope. Um... Let's see again. Dynasty legacies. Okay, now we can open the legacies. All members of the Dukas dynasty gain the benefits of these dynasty legacies. You as the dynasty head can spend renown to unlock legacies. Uh, okay. okay. Okay, we will look into this when we get there. Um, we get 0 0.5 renown a month. So... This will take a bit, right? Let's <laughs> say so we can do anything. 
but let's see uh we are a mere duke so we will have to work our way up uh then we have total soldiers we have a 375 soldiers and five Eteri. Eteri are the Byzantine equivalent to um, knights. This is a fairly, not fairly, this is a completely new mechanic to uh, Crusader Kings 3. So you don't have only uh, vassals, but uh, you have knights that join your army and will fight and give you a a bonus through their prowess skill prowess is a secondary skill that reflects the character's aptitude in personal combat a high prowess skill means they are more likely to survive and perform well both as knights in battles and in duels each point of prowess gives a knight damage 110 toughness uh, we as the ruler have three options we can force character to be a Hetairi, Hetaria, Hetaria, a knight. We can allow them so they are free to choose or we can forbid them. Which keeps them safe from dying in battle. Um, eligible are courtiers and vassals. So currently we have five knights, <laughs> two with, um, I think, good amount or well a medium amount of prowess, and three very um, bad knights. One of them is our son, despite the fact that he has that he has a twelve martial score. His prowess is at three. Okay, what else do we have here in the military screen? Mm, we could create a man at arms regiment. Uh, we can recruit light footmen, bowmen, light horsemen, pikemen, armored footmen, and onagers. Uh, but we don't have the money for that, so we will wait. Oh, so we, we, we are getting suggestions to what to do. Um, the neighboring county of Honorius is both rich and prosperous, but you cannot conquer it without a castle's belly. Spend your court chaplain or run, please, to fabricate a claim on it. We'll give you the justification you need to go to war and take the title for your own county of Honorius. Belongs to Bocellarion, is Dukes Theocharistos. Oh, that was the one with the slow daughter, right? No, she's not slow. thrifty clerk she's actually pr uh, actually pretty pretty decent oh well um yeah he has only 160 men so uh, that's why i think um skipped him so we are suggested to fabricate a claim for honorius um, but first, let's see what else there is. You can designate a guardian for Nikolaos. Okay. Who can be his guardian? Who better than his father, right? We could declare war on, a holy war on, ah, well, the Khazarians, no, <laughs> not a good idea. And our son can marry, okay, we know that, we already arranged this. Um, I'd like to know how our standing with our emperor is. Basilius' opinion of you is plus two, that's not much.
Can I see what the opinions of his vassals are? To the liege here, Cunumenical Patriarch Ignatius, opinion of Basilius, minus 16. Well, nobody likes him, as it seems. <laughs> um, I think it will get really quickly, really interesting. Let's get some time started. Alliance formed, Duke Alexios. Alliances formed with Duke Alexios of Cappadocia. Uh, greetings, Duke Constantinus of Paphlagonia. I gladly accept your marriage proposal. Your son and heir, Andronikos, and my daughter, Athanasia, will be joined in holy matrimony. May God grant them long life and many children. Signed, Duke Alexios of Cappadocia. Excellent. And another alliance. Uh, Eulalia will be the wife of of our um, ruler. In another event, we have wedding celebrations. With my marriage of Duchess Eulalia, the realm expects us to throw a suitable extravagant wedding celebration. It is well within my right to collect a royal aid duty as part of this, but some might consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during a time of jubilation. Of course I will collect it, who pays for their own wedding. Uh, which would give us 75 gold and I'll let my subject enjoy the festivities without worry or care this would give us prestige I think we need the gold but we are a generous character so he would pay for his own wedding and gain the prestige Um, while the time passes, let's take a look at our council, council. To my vassal, I hope it wouldn't come to this, but I am left with no other option. I must resign your appointment as Marshal of the Byzantine Empire effective immediately. Oh, we were the Marshal of the Byzantine Empire. Byzantine Empire. Byzantine? I think it's Byzantine Empire. How oh, dare he? Okay. Um, well, I think we will be in conflict with the Emperor very soon. Limited Crown Authority. Oh, he passed a new law. Rulers can change between available partition succession laws. Titles can be revoked. Vassals can be retracted. Clan government vassals will provide at least 5% of levies and 2% of income. Okay. Wait. Faction created against Basilius. Your acquaintance, Duke Sicinius, created the Liberty Faction against Basilius. Uh, factions, factions, factions. There are the factions against you, against your liege. There it is, Liberty Faction. The Liberty Faction only seeks to lower Crown Authority, but members are otherwise loyal to the realm. Excuse me there for the pause. My, I have a sore throat. And I had a little sip from my water. Um, this faction wants to lower the Crown Authority. Crown Authority represents the general power that a ruler wields over the vassals. So there are four levels of Crown Authority. Autonomous vassals, limited, high, and absolute. Increasing Crown Authority costs an amount of prestige depending on the levels of the ruler's learning skill. Action military power is 124. 13 members. Okay, the Dukes of Epirus. The Dukes of Armaniac. Um, Duke of Athens. 
Sevastia, where is it? Oh, there. The Optimati, uh, Ephesus, Perch, which is there. The Aegean Islands. Viriotai, Achaea, Soloikia, Russia, and Syracuse. So basically, the only ones that are not um, against him are <laughs> our liege, uh, no, no, our uh, allies, Epidokia and Obsikion. But I think we should join this faction, right? Lower crown authority is a good thing. We want to be autonomous. I mean, we like our ruler. It's not that we are trying to replace him. We just want some changes in our favor. And I think that would be something... ...that we would do, right? The easy way. We are a lazy character. What would be the easy way? To get involved in a in a rebellion against our liege, which is the um, more powerful faction, right? There are only a handful of vassals uh, that are not in this faction. Or would we stick with the Emperor? And let them do their thing. Hmm. I I think I cannot answer it through the lazy personality trait, but we are a very martial character. That means we uh, want glory in battle. And battle is a more frequent thing in a more autonomous empire. So we will join the faction. You are now the leader of the Liberty faction against Vasilios Vasilios. Uh, Vasilios Vasilios. Oh, because I'm one of the most powerful vassals, right? We can set an ultimatum in 24 months. The faction will send an ultimatum to the faction target. If accepted, the faction's demands will be fulfilled. If the target does not accept, there will be civil war. Oh, Jesus, there are a lot of characters against us. We cannot force them, but we could sway them, right? Somehow. Attempt to sway Duke Simvatios, improving his opinion of you. Hmm. We can only force him to join our faction when we have a hook on him. A hook is a general term for a relationship between characters where one can get the other to do their will. There are two types, weak hooks and strong hooks, which are require, acquired in different ways. Hooks can be used to force through many interactions, for example, marriages, propose, marriage proposals and feudal contract changes. A weak hook is a fairly common hook that might have on a character who owes you a favor. Excuse me. Or that you have manipulated to do your will. While there are many interactions where a weak hook can be used, for example a marriage proposal that cannot be used to force someone to become your agent in a murder scheme and does not provide a passive benefit for that a strong hook is necessary. Every child born to a noble house also owes the house head an initial weak hook. Okay, so that means we have some something, something against them that we can use or a favor to call. 
a strong strong hook is a very powerful hook that might have on a character that you might have on a character who you have blackmails oh okay if you know another character's criminal secret you you can use this to potentially gain a hook on them strong hooks are much more powerful than weak hooks and can force someone to do terrible deeds for you such as to become your agent in a murder scheme a strong hook also prevents the target from taking any hostile actions towards the holder interesting stronger hooks are not spent when used but instead go on a cooldown before they can be used again the passive effect is not lost when the hook is used interesting so how do we get a hook on him <laughs> So who's more powerful, he or the Marshal of Cap uh, the the Dukes of Cappadocia? We will try to sway him, which will increase our his opinion of us. We started to sway a scheme, uh, a sway scheme against Duke Simvatios. That's good. Yeah, let's see what will happen the thing is we are the faction head so there cannot happen much because uh, before we are not ready right the good thing is that everyone likes us kind of now because we because of personal diplomacy nice i don't know if this is um all to the fact that we are in this faction but yeah our military power war rises we have 158 percent i think we are the red bar right faction military power is a measure of total military strength of faction relative to the target each individual faction member adds their full strength to the faction as long as they remain in the faction if the faction target is the liege of a member the strength of the member is also subtracted from the relative power of the liege 173 because someone joined And some make a Bucalarian. Well, our neighbor, right? That's good. That's good. We will be able to send an ultimate in 15 months because our discontent grows. Uh, but I think uh, 10 minutes ago, I wanted to take a look at the council. We have the Duchess Eulalia, which is our wife. Um, and here's a mechanic I told you, I think in the last episode or in this one, I think it was the last one, um, where I spoke about the fact that the skills of your wife are no longer just added to your own skills in, in a percentage, but rather you can choose um, in which affairs your wife will assist you. So, um, Eulalia is a is very good at diplomacy. So, so that's the 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 best um, the best focus we can choose for her uh, on our court. And the second one is stewardship. So, manage our domain. Um, I think we will go for this. Uh, we are a faction leader. We need everybody to kind of like us. It is a period where uh, diplomacy plays a major role. So I think uh, it's the best for her to help us in diplomatic affairs. Um, yeah, I accidentally paused the video um and in the meantime i without knowing it but i i paused the video so i had our bishop fabricate a claim on honorius and uh yeah that's one thing that happened 
the other thing that happened was that um, we swapped the this one Maya Justinianos of uh, Stefani uh, was our steward and he was a very bad a very terrible steward and our this one Maya Zacharias used to be our marshal but he was a way better steward so we had him swap his position with the um with the other steward and our son Andronikos is now our marshal um, we assigned our chancellor to domestic affairs which gives us um, which affects the come on the opinion of our direct vassals our steward is collecting taxes, which gives us 8.5% um, increase taxes. Our marshal is organizing the levies, which increases um, levy size, garrison size, and reinforcement rate by 17%. Uh, well, these one I think are pretty obvious in reinforcement rate uh, also. We have an event. Virtuous bishop celebrated. Orthodox favor increased by 10 and Georgios gains 150. Who is he? Bishop Georgios of Sevastia. So he's a bishop of this one. And what happened? Bishop celebrated. Okay. Celebrated by whom? seems not to be very important right it doesn't affect us so let it be um duke simvatius swayed nice so he likes us a lot now uh the sway decreases by 0.6 each year which is um pretty neat i see he's a very pious person is 21 and learning he has amassed some quite some gold there his son Isakios is my brother-in-law he's 23 and will be the next ruler right Um, there's the title, Line of Succession, Isakios Marikos, yeah, he's the next ruler. And I saw something, they are actually allied to my ally, to the Dukes of um, Cappadocia. He's allied with me and allied with uh, Obsikion and Vukelarion. So that could be interesting because we are trying to um, fabricate a claim on this county. Maybe we shouldn't do this. Maybe we should uh, take a look eastwards to the county of Sinope, which belongs to Duke Ioannis of Armagnac, a 28 year old, callous, arrogant, and ambitious person. Uh huh. He has a son, he's three years old. he has no allies whatsoever he looks dope with his beard but that will not uh, be enough to hinder us in uh, fabricating a claim left click on a location on the map to assign task
Yes. Uh, this will be a minor setback of five months, but it's better than uh, having our ally choose between us and the Dukes of Bukelarion. It is okay. Maybe we can even forge an alliance with them. He has a son. So we have a son too. Does he have a daughter? No. Oh. Yeah, well, he has, but um, he's married to Matthäus. Fedokia. Mm, okay, so we finished our court. Let's see this intrigue thing. I, I haven't seen this. Uh, personal schemes. We are still scheming now. We will change this up to sway him in liking us, right? Will take about 10 months. Hooks and secrets. Hooks I hold. These are the hooks against my sons, right? Um, my grandson? When did my... When did my son... Get a son. They're not even married for two years. Or are they? I don't think they are. Is he a legitimate, a legitimate child? Yeah, uh, my grandson. Part of my dynasty it looks like it uh okay so i was not informed about this uh but anyhow uh, this will mark the end of uh, this episode um thanks for watching thanks for sticking through and we will hear each other in the next video